it took a lot for people to make it to Bank of America Stadium on October 26th. My family just got water back uh, about a week and a half ago. We didn't have any internet, you know, no cell, no nothing, so you didn't see anything until a couple days later. I was there on 26 just watching trees fall and I knew it was going to be bad and uh, just worried about my family back home. I wasn't able to hear from them till late Saturday night. Artists in the River Arts District raking muck out of their galleries, restaurant owners working so hard to reopen their doors to sustain jobs for their work families. There were hardships. One of my family friends uh, actually passed away. Um, he fell, his apartment complex came undone from the foundation. He left behind his wife and two young kids and just having to go to that funeral and watch the kids have to put their dad in the ground, that's hard. It was sad to know all the things that happened in our area. Uh, Chimney Rock and Lake Laura got hit real hard. Sad to see your hometown destroyed the way it was. The night that happened, my son come home, he said, Mom, I don't never want to see anything like that. It's just like everything just wiped clean. For people in Western North Carolina and beyond. The thing that was, that was really scary for me personally was that I didn't hear from anyone. That was really um, shocking. You're in the boat of, well, well is, every, is everybody okay? You don't know. When you start not hearing from people or not hearing from everyone that you know um, is when I was like, this is beyond what I even thought was you know, possible in that area. It was so sobering to see so many places that I walked with my own two feet, especially in Asheville. You know, the Mana Food Bank being one, me and my mom volunteered there. She would take me there on the weekends and we would, you know, sort boxes in their warehouse. Their whole facility was, was essentially washed away right in this event. South Tunnel Road, just below the Asheville Mall where it meets Swanano River Road. There's a Walgreens on one side of Tunnel Road and there's a U-Haul dealership on the other side. And I actually worked one summer at the, that particular U-Haul dealership. I remember asking my parents when I was a child, well, wh you know, why did, why did we make the choice to move to Asheville? And uh, my parents told me that, well, you know, nothing bad ever happens in Asheville. I remember there was some video of an area that I knew intimately in Western North Carolina, and when they sent the video, I didn't know what I was looking at. These are my neighbors. These are my community members. And to see what happened uh, where the Elk River came through there is just beyond anything that I could have ever imagined. It started with a family text. We got a bunch of group pictures from uh, in the group text from my sister-in-law. Houses are washed out, they're finally finding people. My parents finally got water type text from my sister-in-law. Uh, they finally got power back and I'm looking at these pictures like, this thing is real bad. Craigtown's two miles from my house. In Craigtown, I started getting a text you know, from Burns saying, Coach Craig's whole family is missing. And that was my high school football coach. That's when you realize, it's like, wait a minute, these people are close to me my whole life. When A.C. Reynolds grad Chase Rice came home, he had a request. I told Coach Craig, I was like, I don't know why, but I want to go see it. He said, I want you to see it, because I want you to realize what you guys are doing. So those notable natives wanted to help. Within 24 hours, Luke was on social media saying he had something cooking. Luke called um, right after this happened, a day or two after, and said, you know, I want to do this. Luke texted me um, and said, hey, man, if this date's available, we're doing something in Charlotte. We're working on it, trying to piece it together. I told Luke, I said, whatever you want, I'm there. There was no question um, that, that this was going to happen come hell or high water. On October 7th, Concert for Carolina was announced. A show like this usually takes a year or a year and a half to plan, and we were able to get it done in three weeks. The Tepper stepped up so massively. They have donated this venue 
SES has donated millions of dollars in production for this concert tonight to make sure that that money can go out to the people that need it most. We knew 100% of those dollars were going to flow right back into our community and the charities that mean so much to our region. Luke and I went to the same high school there at Reynolds. Caleb Presley's MC in the night, AC Reynolds kid. It's pretty unique to have that type of people and that many um, that are from the same high school that can you know, hopefully impact in a really positive way that area. And suddenly, those affected had something to look forward to. And I have never been more proud to walk on this stage than I am right now. I told my daughter, I said, we gotta go. That's our part. We gotta help. I joined the queue and sat through 50,000 people in front of me just to be able to get tickets. I didn't care how high up I was. I just wanted to be here. I have friends around the world, in Europe and other places, who heard all about this. We got on the app, we were already 13,000th in line at Ticketmaster, but we got tickets. It sold out like that, and all these people here, donations everywhere. All of those donations, over 82,000 of them, made their way inside for the largest event by attendance in Bank of America Stadium history. However, hundreds in the crowd didn't have to donate. They were first responders, many from the Asheville area. For all the people that have been working up there, it's, it's a little bit of a taking a breath, I hope would, would show that uh, how much the state supports them and how much we're gonna stand by them. Those folks have been on the ground since day one before Helene and will be in our community long after to help with the support that our region is going to need for the months and years to come. How are we feeling, Charlotte? Just being able to, to give those people an hour, two, three hours of, of joy and, and hope and happiness, you know, amidst so much chaos and tragedy and loss is uh, something that I'm really, really proud of. Those three hours of joy included the likes of Chase Rice, Keith Urban, Billy Strings, Cheryl Crow, Bailey Zimmerman, and a surprise or two. Eric Church called him and here we are. But for Luke Combs and Eric Church, there was someone they knew they had to have. We both kind of went through our phones and tried to figure out um, who we could get to. And it was, imp I had to get James Taylor. Like I just, I have to hear Carolina in my mind in this stadium, okay? I'd like to thank Luke and, and Eric particularly for, for making me part of this tonight. I couldn't get his cell number, so I kept going through my phone to find who would know James Taylor. I had a friend of mine, Joe Walsh, who's in the Eagles, and I called him. And I was like, I need you to get a hold of James Taylor. And Joe didn't hit me back, so I hit him again. And then I hit him again. <laughs> and finally, James told me last night on stage, he said, you know, you really kind of freaked out Joe Walsh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure after talking to James last night that I think I stalked him um, for a period of a week or two. Someone had reached out to me uh, and said, hey, James would like to, to get in touch with you. And um, they said, just text him before you call him. And I said, well, I'm not calling him. I mean, I'm, what am I going to say to James Taylor? That what, what am I going to add to his life in any way? You know, so <laughs> he texted me back and said, you know, hey, yeah, man, I'm really excited to be at the show. And uh, he said, your bass player and your keys player are, are going to play in my band. So that's how I heard that my bass player and my keys player <laughs> are probably not my bass player and my keys player anymore. No matter which artist took the stage, it was unlike any performance in their careers. The longer you go, the more you start realizing it's just, it's not about yourself. This is just one perfect example of how, okay, we got a platform and if God's gonna give us this ability to use that platform to raise money for people who need it, that's, that's the best thing you can do in life. For one night, we can all look at the power of music and the power of coming together. I hope would, would show that uh, how much the state supports them and how much we're going to stand by them. After all the cheers, songs, and donations, more than $24.5 million were raised. All of it coming back to help Western North Carolina. And that's going to come back to our community in millions and millions of dollars for support for the months and years that we're going to need it.
this is for the most worthy cause that I can think of. So it means so much more than just a regular concert. Seeing all these people who are donating a lot of money to just be able to help us out even just for a little bit, I mean, it's really great. It's really cool that we have the ability to help and, and all these Carolina folks are stepping up to do it. The small communities that specifically make up Western North Carolina are these strong, independent, proud communities. And I've said many times that they're the exact community that when the community next door is in trouble, you can count on that community to come help you. And in this situation, there is no community next door. What you're seeing tonight is we are the community next door. The people that are in this stadium are the community next door. There's also a lot of stories about people helping each other that are amazing stories. The strength of the people there and the character of the people there is unlike anywhere in the world. And even though the lights have turned off, the concert's purpose continues. The biggest thing I think for Luke and I, most important part, is we continue to shine a light on this. Most powerful thing we have in this is the people that want to stay in their community because that's how we build the community. We build it from the inside. These people are going to need help long after tonight and long after next month and long after six months. To see all these people here to help support the people that don't have homes, it makes your heart big to know that there's a lot of people that care about you.